What is up and welcome to another episode of the Upland Show. Today we're excited to have Jay Mancy with us. Um, I was recently introduced to uplandgaming.me, the, the website where they have the legit leagues. And I even had a chance to play my first uh, game this week where you actually can have value with your your legits. You can like play them in an actual uh, fantasy football style game and even make money playing that game. So I was really excited to be introduced to Jay Mancy to learn a little bit about Upland Gaming and uh, excited to dig a little bit deeper today. Thanks for coming on the show, my man. Cool. Thanks for having me and and thanks for for trying out legit leagues. I'm I'm glad you gave it a try. Yeah, let me actually share my screen for those of you uh watching. Uh we do this on actually I do have video on Spotify as well as YouTube now, but if you're on Apple Podcasts or somewhere else, go to one of those places if you want to check out the screen. Let me share this really quick. So you can see this is the website right here, uplandgaming.me. And uh, I played two in two different games this week. So it's a weekly matchup, and I played against Mr. Goat here, and I lost this one. This was in a bronze league, so uh, this one's cheaper to enter. And then I played another one in a silver, a silver uh, matchup, and this one pays out a little bit more. Funny enough, this was this one was actually against Blue Rain, who was on a previous podcast, and I won this one. So, uh, pretty cool that uh, that it was fun. It was fun playing, picking some of my players. So, how it works? You actually have to have these players. You actually have to have their legit in order to use them in the league. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, w- went pretty. I'm not sure if I made enough earnings in my silver to pay for my loss and. in in the bronze but uh well the most important thing is you had fun right (laughs) yeah exactly exactly had had a lot of fun that's good that's good well that was that was our whole goal is you know we wanted to bring more fun more engagement more utility to to upland you know with the the layer two stuff um and and that's what upland gaming is all about and we um we all got these these assets and now we want to do stuff with our assets and i think in in the case of legit leagues uh, i remember when uh nflpa legits first came out and you know all over discord everyone there's a whole bunch of people at the same time kind of with the same idea like oh my gosh it'd be so awesome to play fantasy football with these and i think we were all kind of waiting for upland to do that and um and it kind of never materialized and then um you know once upland we saw this kind of pivot to layer two and you know we um at upland gaming decided like hey you know what this is up to us let's let's do it let's bring it to the game and we're we're proud to be the first um you know group of third-party developers to actually launch um a a viable layer two product so um yeah a game yeah. that people are actually playing and and enjoying. How, how long has how long has it been up and running? Um, we did get it going by the season start, the NFL season start. Um, it was it was a mad dash, and I really I gotta credit our development team, um, Abstract and the Tempest and Steve. Um, I mean they they really worked hard um, to to get it up and running. We were. Um, uh, we had other things in mind let's just say that and um and but then the nfl season it's like oh man the season is right there if we don't do something with legits now we're gonna have to like wait a whole nother year and so um so those guys they they hit the pavement hard and um and 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 came up with a a good product that that works yeah. people are yeah. I've, I've got to say my my first week playing it was a pretty fun easy to use experience i mean the sign up's pretty easy um and the really cool thing if you don't know uh those of you out there who may be interested in playing in these leagues uh you can actually use your upix to convert to uh the in game because what it is you can actually convert upix um to and from their in-game token 
-hmm. So uh, to increase your epics, all, all I have to do is like send your epics to an account, then they convert that to the in-game token for Upland Gaming. And it was pretty easy. And just with that, I already had that, those epics that I'm earning in my account. I'm sure many of you are in the same situation where you have these legits, you have your properties earning you some epics, and that's all it takes to start playing. I didn't have to pay any extra money or do anything special to get started. So it was, it was really easy and, and fun as well. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, we uh, we wanted to make it as accessible as possible to everyone. So we we have an OPEX option. We have a USD option if, if someone yep. wants to do USD. So, you know, whichever way you want to go. And um, we made it so all legit score points. So um, it, it that's one of the deviations from, like, your typical kind of fantasy league is we have – all the defensive positions, they score points, even punters score points. You never see that in fantasy. Um, and and so, but but we wanted to make sure, like, as long as you have seven legits at different positions, um, then you're eligible to play. Um, you know, obviously, if you've if you've got a greater selection of legits and you have some, you know, some knowledge of the game and stuff, you're gonna be at an advantage. But you know, as far as as far as lowering the barriers to entry, that was that was a key thing for for us this year. And then for next season, we've got a whole bunch of things in mind to have you know different game modes and that kind of thing, and and some more advanced features. Uh, but the the key was getting something that works up and running and and going. And we've made some improvements um, during the season, and we have a a new website design launching really soon so we're kind of kind of overhauling that a little bit um so you know onward and upward yeah yeah i i'm really excited you guys were able to get it out for this season because i i definitely know from a developer standpoint like getting something out there for the community to play with and use and try out is the best way to like learn and get feedback and and make those improvements so i imagine it's going to be that much better next season so that's really exciting yeah it's kind of it's like a beta season and we're you know we are openly looking for feedback like if if people we want to know what their experience is like and if they have suggestions and all of that stuff um you know so but in the meantime like you said there's there's a lot of people that they're they're earning on their properties and they're not um they're not too thrilled right now with um with minting properties because um you know just the way the market is right now and it's like well hey you can you can use your upex to to have some fun and maybe even win more upex um we've got there's a couple a couple players that are really you know really into it and they they usually join like six or seven uh, leagues per week and wow. um, and and they have they usually these guys i think one of them went like six and one last week and the other went like uh three and two or something so they you know that generally have a winning record and um and they've made made out pretty well so far yeah so, yeah you could make a pretty decent return if you know if you know your football know your matchups know who's gonna perform well each week you can you could definitely make a make a good decent income hustle side hustle playing this playing this game. I think my favorite thing though is I've gotten so many messages, uh, particularly from from international players, that um, they knew nothing about American football. Um, they bought legits because it was you know a new thing in Upland or whatever, you know, but they didn't know anything, and they're like, but but they they gravitated towards this game because it's something they could do with their legits. And now it has kind of gotten them interested in the game. And they're like, you know, they, they, they have their lineup and then they can watch the game and, and they know, okay, I have Saquon Barkley. And so they can watch the giants play and be like, Oh yeah, go Saquon, you know? And so they're now having fun rooting on their guys, even though they had no concept of, of <laughs> what American football was all about. And, um, and those those kind of stories, I mean, really warms my heart that that these guys are are, are getting into it. And, um, and yeah, and I love that. Cool. So it's it's definitely an exciting way to like. It makes watching any game more exciting when you have something on the line there. And even if it's just a small amount, and you're just having fun with it. 
it's it's gonna make your weekend a little more exciting watching those football games you know uh that's just right having something on the line and rooting for the guy who's who can win you some points and mm -hmm. potentially some money so that that's really cool uh, i had a great time i'll definitely play again this week and uh keep going with it see how far i can get my initial 500 500 points that i had there <laughs> all right great uh I do want to dig in uh, on these podcasts. I really like to dig into each player and, and learn a little bit more about you. I'm curious, how long have you been playing Upland and, and how did you initially hear about the game and, and, and get kind of excited about it? Okay, good, good question. Um, so I started in April of 21. Okay. And this was around the time when like NFTs were were going crazy. You know, Beeple had sold that sixty nine million dollar one. I was actually having a conversation with a buddy of mine, and we we're talking about NFTs and how man, this is crazy. And uh, my buddy says, "Yeah, I got a friend that's actually buying like real estate that's like not even real. It's just it's just on the computer, and 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 he's actually like making money and stuff." I'm like really you know and so uh so i started looking into it um and and that's when like it, it was kind of like decentraland or upland right um where yeah. it was kind of, and it looked at the barriers to entry with decentraland and i'm not like i'm not really a crypto guy right and and it just seemed really complicated to get into and expensive and all of that i mean it looked kind of cool that is 3d whatever but like eh I liked Upland that the it had low barriers to entry, you know, it could get in really cheap. It was mobile. You know, I'm on my phone way more than my computer and, um, you know, it just, it, it looked cool. So, um, so I got into it and I was like completely lost at first. And, and I didn't know how, I didn't know how FSA worked. Um, I, I started in Brooklyn and I, I minted the property. They, they, you know, spawned me on. And then I, I didn't see any other FSAs around. I'm like, is it only one that you can get? So anyway, I, I got impatient because I knew I wasn't going to get far. And I, I immediately put in a hundred dollars and that was like <laughs> <laughs> big mistake. Right. But, uh, but anyway, so I was, I, I started that way. And then, um, uh, then I found discord like a month later and everything changed. You know, it was like, um, now, now I really started getting into it and, um, and I got heavily involved in the discord server. Um, you know, I, you know, over time I ended up, uh, getting into like the top 15 posters on, on, on the channel. I like to, I like to help the new players. Um, especially since I had, I, I knew my experience in the beginning wasn't, um, wasn't ideal so i like to 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 help out the new players and i um i got involved uh with the the travel maps you know uh, uh banana was uh was making those travel maps and then um and i was like you know it would be really cool if it was kind of like laid out more like geographically and so you know i i actually asked him i'm like do you mind if i take another angle he's like no go ahead man so, um, so I came out with my travel maps to help people out and, and that kind of thing. And it, and it got a little more cumbersome each time, every time they really, yeah, it's like, city. okay, how do I do the spaghetti? Um, but, uh, um, you know, so that was, that was one of my contributions back to, um, uh, back to the community and, um, and then, um, uh, later i i started getting more involved in in nodes um yeah well so, you know i'm i'm involved in that too and then then came the hackathon and in upland gaming yeah um i'm curious like when you first got involved in discord what channels uh, obviously you said the new player channel um is that where you spent a lot of your time at the beginning did you end up going to other channels and get heavily involved there I'm, I'm curious to hear how that went for you yeah i i mostly stuck around general and new player chat um and and kind of uh developing some relationships there and helping the new players and um and it, i didn't i didn't venture out into too many other servers except um uh, when analytic assassins came out, it was like, oh my gosh, this is such a treasure trove. So, um, so I, I loved the analytic assassins. Um, 
and that but then they got too good at at, at predicting collections and then i started <laughs> getting mad because i'm like wait a minute i thought i did good research but everyone has this research because they they went to the assassins <laughs> yeah so, that's true um, so they're they're great love their research great team over there too and um uh, so I spent spent some time in that server too, but um, you know I'm I'm in a lot of servers, but I don't um, I don't engage a whole lot um, um, just because you know of, of the time. time yeah, frame, yeah, definitely. Mostly. So what what led to you kind of getting involved with the hackathon, like making those relationships, and then actually getting involved with the team? I'm curious to hear the story. Yeah. Um, so the hackathon, um, you know, I wasn't like totally sure what it was, was about really. And, and, um, because it seemed a little bit vague to me, but, but I went into the, the channel that Upland had opened for the hackathon and I was like, look, I have no coding skills, but I have ideas. I've got lots of ideas and I know business and stuff. So, you know, if there are any coders out there that, that want to pair up, you know, I, I'd love to pair up. So, um, so Grom Brindle actually reached out to me and, and he's like, yeah, Hey, you know, I, I know coding, but I'm not really interested in the other stuff. So, uh, <laughs> Hey, let, let's, let's partner up. And then, and then he brought in sheep miner too, who had worked with him a bit on the upland optimizer, uh, website. And, um, so, so it was the three of us and, um, me, you know, we ended up, um, doing the um the nft battle arena and um um and and fortunately we we won and it was that was really that was really thrilling um you know it was it was an insane couple days there of of <laughs> like just uh developing the 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 proof of concept and you know grom he he did the the bulk of the of the coding and and everything and and i mean it was um, it, it was, it was pretty awesome. Um, he, he was, I know he said in his, uh, one of the, the panelists asked him about the MVP of the team and, um, and he, you know, he's a, he's a nice and, and kind of a humble guy. And he said, MVP was, was me. No, no, no. He was, he was definitely the MVP of the team. <laughs> I want to, I want to make that one clear. So, um, he, he won't admit it. Um, but yeah, it, he was the MVP. But oh, um, that's really cool. That's really cool. You guys made that relationship and worked hard together on the project. Yeah. But the, the way things went, and I know there are some people that are kind of wondering about, about this is like after the hackathon, um, Upland, um, they, they kind of closed the sandbox and the developer tools and that kind of thing. And, and there wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot we could, we could do. Um, we were having, some other discussions in, in the background that I won't get too much into, but, um, but then when, when Grom, he had an opportunity with the, the Upex world guys, um, as, as he talked about on an earlier podcast you had. Um, so he, you know, he, he, he had that opportunity to, to hook up with them. And, um, you know, we basically, he basically said, look, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take this other opportunity, but if you want to do something with, um, you know, the, the, B, the, well, the NFT battles, um, you know, you're, you're welcome to it. And, and so, you know, I said, okay, you know, great, thanks. And so, um, so then I started looking for, for some new partners here and, um, the guys at, um, Upland Realty, so that yeah, abstract and Tempest and Steve, um, who were also in the hackathon, um, uh they were they were interested in in partnering up and um and then we brought in uh texas ag um who is you know on the on the business side of things he he has a couple of companies that he's um that wow. he owns that kind of thing and um and then we brought in dejac um for the graphic design and, and that kind of thing and marketing and stuff and she's amazing um and so uh, so we decided that like we were going to carry this torch forward. And so, like I say, you know, the, the original plan was to, to develop the BE battles game, but we, we put that on the shelf because of the timing with the, the NFL and everything yeah. like that. So I know, I, I do know that there are people out there that are like, where's this game? You know, mm -hmm. we, 
the hackathon was six months ago or whatever, and we still don't have this game. Well, it it's coming. <laughs> cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And, That's... and you know, we we really we have a plan to to integrate like all kinds of different assets into different games. Um, and I think this will be a big step because there's a lot of players that aren't very interested in the NFLPA legit, so they don't have them or whatever. But when it comes to block explorers, like everyone's got block explorers, right? And so this this will be um, an element of utility that we'll be able to bring to the to the community, and and it'll it'll I think appeal to a a broader base of of users. And so um, yeah, as yeah. as a personally like as a gamer with just a heavy gaming background, that's definitely really exciting to me. Is like the, having this mini games with block explorers or, or any type of thing that I can do for fun with those, those block explorers is, is just really exciting. There's so much potential and so many different types of games you could make just, just with those. So really mm -hmm. cool, really cool concept for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So can't, can't wait to see, d don't need you to spoil anything, but I can't wait to see. What, <laughs> uh, what it's it's still going to take a little bit of time to, to develop. We've, we've, um come up with um several enhancements to the original concept um because we really want we want something that's going to be fun and engaging um and not something that someone's going to play for five minutes and be like oh yeah okay um so so there's uh there's more to it and um you know uh we'll we'll keep it tuned we do we do plan on um on throwing out some sneak previews and stuff when oh. when we get to the right time in our in our Discord channel. So um, so we'll see we'll see how it goes. So. Hey, that's very exciting! Can't wait can't wait to learn more, and I'll definitely be following that one closely because I'm excited to battle with my uh, my block explorers. I've got <laughs> quite the collection, and some that are pretty rare, some that are like only thirty or less or twenty or less of them. So I'm sure having those you know, good collector's item is going to be fun in a, in a gaming scenario for sure. And and I think yeah. that's what really brings value to these. And when people can have fun with it, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's exciting to have those rare items. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, Hey, that's why we play games. We play them to have fun. Right. So, exactly. um, I mean, in the case of blockchain games, it, it kind of happens to have the added bonus that we have, we have the ability to make some money, but I think, I mean, I've been playing. I've been playing video games for. God, when did Atari Twenty Six Hundred come out? <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I actually had one when I was little. Um, so I've been playing games forever, and 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 money has just been a one way street, right? You pay for the game, or you pay yep. for whatever's in the game, and that's just an ex an entertainment expense, um, and so the blockchain gaming i think is is a really um awesome added um uh, element to to gaming where actually we can um you know have value that's that's transferable um uh in these games and so you know when it when it comes to um like the 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 be battles there'll be um different uh, different ways that you can you can train your your block explorer to, to make it you know more powerful and more more valuable um and so it, we have we have a whole lot we have a lot planned and the other thing that i i, I want to mention too is i like that upland is um uh doing like these kind of collections of uh, I shouldn't use the word collection, but these uh, these groups of of block explorers, like say the the FIFA crests, for example. Yeah. And so so we have these areas where we have these these class of block explorers, and there are um, there are things that we can do from a layer two gaming standpoint, where to have a collection of again, I use the word collection, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> to to have the, the um, multiple explorers from from a group of explorers can have um, additional benefits. So, um, 
Yeah, I think in Upland they, they have like they call them series or something like that, and you can complete yeah. a series. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. lots of lots of potential there for sure. And even I think long term individual games can be born out of you know individual series of of block explorers. You know, you could have a whole Halloween game just off all the Halloween block explorers we have, and 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 m- many other concepts could be built out of these. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, an- another concept here that i really think is is cool is the idea of gamers getting kind of the time they invest into a game may not all be just for entertainment or be considered a waste of time or something like that right because right. we we're going to have cases i'm assuming where you have maybe a really low value block explorer let's say it's one of I don't know, 10,000 of these block explorers, which, you know, when you compare that to a one of 20 or a one of 30, that it's, there's a lot of them. They're not as rare. They're not going to sell for as much, you know, Mm -hmm. just based on that alone. However, if there's a game that allows you to build up skills of a, of a block explorer on a, Mm -hmm. you know, a, a layer two, a layer two game, you know, a game like you guys are working on, where you can build up stats into a block explorer or something like that. It, you can create value into an item that mm-hmm. may at the surface not have a lot of value. And that is that alone is a really cool concept for gamers to get rewarded just for spending time playing a game. Maybe they're not into that game anymore. They're they're you know, or they had a life event happen and, and they need some money and they can, you know, take this hobby they've been doing and then sell these items to someone else who's getting into it and want something, some a character or a block explorer, whatever it is, with more skills or whatever, however it will work in this game. Mm-hmm. But that alone is just something that I think gets me really excited is gamers being rewarded and not, it not all being a waste of time, you know, like a lot right. of society right. may look down upon gamers for <laughs> spending too much time, you know not not creating value but you know gamers see value in what other gamers have done so and i mean it's a billion or or trillion dollar industry so we know gaming isn't something that's going away anytime soon right Mm -hmm. that's right Mm -hmm. so yeah i i love this uh whole decentralization of gaming and kind of this web 2 gaming like tr- traditional gaming as it's been so far like you said the developers get all the money and the players just get to play the game and have that entertainment opportunity but now we can kind of have a win-win situation where developers as well as the players can be rewarded for their time and energy put into the game so mm-hmm. I, I mean that's just really exciting concept of web3 gaming overall Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it, it's it, i think this is going to be it'll be the the new normal um eventually um it's because i think it's just it's such a huge advantage over you know traditional gaming yeah yeah and i think your average gamer is gonna go why should why would i spend time playing that i mean yeah we all play games those of us who are gamers we play games for fun we play it for an escape to decompress whatever it may be you know life's hard enough it's nice to just entertain yourselves you know some people choose sports some people choose games some people choose movies whatever your entertainment is you know that's up to you but i i just i'm really excited about you know gamers being able to have value in in their assets and their time spent in a game so yeah i'm really excited to see what you guys are creating for that because i'm already having some fun you know with with uh this legit leagues but i'm i'm not a huge football fan i mean i'm excited about legits i'm excited about the longer i i believe in the long-term capability of them but it's not something that uh, like i love like i i don't traditionally Mm -hmm. just watch football every week you know right right Whereas a fun little battle arena or something like that with block explorers is just super cool to me. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the inflection point that I think Upland really needs to, needs to hit is because 
there it seems it seems like the the overwhelming majority of the of the early adopters kind of um got in for like the the speculation aspect yeah. of it, right and because uh, i mean even when i got in, in in april of last year there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot and sometimes when i think back of it it that's where some of the progress kind of comes to comes to mind you know when you're when you're in it every day and you're on discord every day and it can seem so slow, like why haven't they done this yet? Why haven't they done that? And I think back just like a year and a half ago, the game, first of all, the game was entirely 2d. We didn't even have buildings, let alone, yeah. you know, we didn't have buildings. We didn't have spark. We didn't have cars. We didn't have, you know, all these things that, that we have now. Um, so, you know, I do have to give the, the team credit. They've come a long way. I mean, I know like us, as as players we're very impatient we want everything right now and we want all to work perfectly but you know i, I do gotta acknowledge that they've they've made a lot of progress yeah. um but but whether they've hit that tipping point yet to where it's a game like it's a fun game that people want to play versus it's some tool for people to make money you know i don't know if we've we've hit that inflection point yet um because the you know the money and the market and all that stuff still seems to be a big element, and I think it, it there'll always be part of that. And um, but th there's got to be two sides to every trade, uh, or a buyer and a seller. So, like in order for in order for that, if you train your block explorer and and it has these stats, there has to be someone on the other side who wants to buy that, and the reason yeah. they want to buy that is because they want to have fun right and 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 they can have fun and they can they can even have a time period say you know what i'm probably going to play this for a few months maybe build it up even more and then i'll sell it to the next person who's coming in you know i think you kind of mentioned it like cycles we all we all have these different cycles that that we're we're in in the game and you know i don't think anyone really plays one game for a decade right um you, you kind of come and go and whatever and, yep. and so um when you have these these kind of overlaps where one person is kind of you know they've had their fun whatever and now someone else is coming in that's that's new and they want to have fun they can kind of pick up the the torch um which i do have an olympic torch be that i'm gonna train so <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <there you> <laughs> um sorry but uh but but literally you can you can keep these assets going it's not like when the account goes dormant everything inside the account goes dormant which is the case with with most of our games i know there's been a few games that i've played in the past where i've put i've put more money than i want to admit um <laughs> in, into the likewise, game likewise. and then by the by the time i'm done playing it's like okay i'm done with that and then and and that's it like and then i kind of think man I, then that that's when I look at all the money I spent and it's like, well, what do I have to show for it now? <laughs> but, uh, you know, good times along the way. Yeah. Yeah. But like Pokemon Go, I, I, that's one of those games that came out. I put some money in, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, how cool would it be if I could sell some of those Pokemon to somebody who wants them, you know? <laughs> uh, and the issue right now with Web 2 gaming is people are profiting off it but people are having to sell their entire account they have to sell everything they own and it's just you know it's 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 not as fun that way people and i think this whole web 3 this idea that you can be one character you can be represented as one person in all different types of games that you play right mm -hmm. that's where we have our you know, online personas, our gamer names, so to speak, you know, which we have ours on the screen right now. And that's our online digital persona that we want to use throughout all these games. So we don't want to have to sell our entire account to someone else. We just want to be able to sell some of the assets we don't we don't have value in anymore. Mm -hmm. So someone else who does value that. So that's right. So by the way, you mentioned for screen names too. Yeah. You know, one, one thing I got to I got to mention is when I first signed up with Upland, I didn't realize that the username I was putting in was going to be my screen name. <laughs> and uh 
Uh, so, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's my name. Right. Um, and so, uh, um, at one point I wanted to see if I could, if I could change it or whatever, but, but by that point I had built my account up to a point where I, you know, I didn't want to let it go. And also I had, I had become so active in discord and everything that I didn't really want to change my, my identity. So, yeah, exactly. You know, so I don't have a very creative uh, <laughs> username, but but it's me. So hey, it's you. It's you've created you've created a brand and an identity around it. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm curious. You mentioned uh, you, the other thing you got heavily involved in was nodes, and that's something that really appealed to you. Tell me about your experience getting involved in nodes. What do you like about these nodes, and uh, what has been your experience so far? Oh. I, th I think it's I think it's great, and I I think we've we've seen a shift in the game um, as far as like creating value with the properties and that kind of thing of of building these communities. Um, you know, originally when um, uh, well, my experience I know I know there's um, you do had their had their stuff going on first, but that was kind of like before I got into it. Um, I'd say for me personally, my first experience was like Portage Park and, and seeing how they're building. And, and actually at first it was kind of like a joke. It was like, here's this massive, uh, unminted neighborhood in, in Chicago and people were minting up blocks at a time. You yeah. Know? And, and super cheap to buy. Yeah. Property there. yeah. So, you know, I bought, I bought myself a block and all of that and, but then I, I ended up kind of like, I would say late, it was late last year. I think that the game really started like taking off and, um, and I wasn't, I wasn't really a major believer in nodes and I, and I sold off all my Portage Park properties. And that's one of my biggest regrets in the, in the game. But, um, but, you know, I, I have gotten involved in, in some others like, um, like the, the the Creedmoor neighborhood of you know all the crooked houses and the the Halloween stuff and everything and and that's cool but um, but actually my my favorite so far has been um, um, IDA or IDA the International Developers Association so you know that um, like the founding members are Usadag and uh, Relics and um, Obey and uh, Shikaitlin um, and um, and so I got involved in that and uh, to upon the, the Rio launch, it was a big secret of, of what neighborhood we were going to go after. And, and we chose Monero and um, and we went in and minted out and it minted out quickly. Um, and even though you, you luckily got your hands on some of those properties. I was even <laughs> quick to get three in each neighborhood. And that was my goal. And I got a few there. Yeah, you got three in there and moved on. But uh yeah. But yeah, so so we minted up Monero, and um, and and actually part of part of my role in in the the node was to come up with a, a master plan for the for the node. So like when you viewed it from above, it would have this design. So we have these blocks that are you know, red or blue or yellow and that kind of thing, and it kind of makes a picture. And and actually, there's there's part of the neighborhood where. Um, when it's all done, it'll spell out I D A and have a heart. So you'll cool. be able to see like I D A love and then, <laughs> um, and, and it, it's kind of a, a neat neighborhood, but like we have been building that so fast. I think we've, we've set some kind of building records that, you know, um, I don't think you've, you know, seen we've, we're, um, there's 646 properties in Monero. And so of the hoods that are at least 646 properties or more um we are i think it's the i think we're the seventh um highest completed percentage wow um, and, and this is real like real yeah, like this is just launch, you know? that's impressive so you know all these other like we're not talking san francisco or manhattan or something like that that's been out forever um and so we've been building really fast we we got Abdullah in there too. He's um, he's got a factory and he's now building a showroom and um, and he's been he's been awesome. He's like, hey, whatever you guys want to make, like this is yours. And and so you know when it comes to outdoor decor and when when he's able to produce and that kind of thing, um, 
you know, he's, he's having fun and he, you know, he believes in, in the node concept and, and, and building the community and that kind of thing too. Um, so it's been, it's been kind of fun to, to work with him a, a bit, but you know, all the, the, the people, um, that have come together, we've got, it's right around a hundred, um, a hundred members, uh, own the 646 pops and, um, it, it's just been, it's been a great group of people and, um, I love how everyone is working together and they're, you know, they can, they can see like um, a shared vision and, and that kind of thing. And we, you know, we really want to be inclusive to everyone. It is, I mean, international, right? So we've got players from, from all over the world participating and, um, and it's, it's fun. So um, seeing how we can, we can build these communities, like now we're, we're getting some shops set up. Um, we have a football shop in there and there's, there are other shops coming. Um, and, and this, this localization that Upland is kind of bringing to the, to the metaverse, like the, the, the sales that we saw with the, the mugs and stuff, how they're only available in certain cities. And, and yeah, crazy. That's crazy. You know, we, we can see like where this is going and and the the localization and it'll it'll matter more like where you are and where where you make your home and that kind of thing. So um, so this is this is one place. But as we as we outgrow Monero, the the IDA is going to have future nodes in other cities. I mean, our, our goal is really to to have have a node in all of like the premier international cities. Um, so uh, we skipped, um, we skipped Porto and we skipped Dallas Arlington. Um, and obviously Lucille has its own kind of, you know, nuanced thing, but um, so we'll, we'll see where, where the next one comes, but, um, uh, but, but it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So like I said, I, I used to be really, really active in the general, like upland chat and now you know i'm much more active within um Ida and um well and upland gaming of course but yeah um, yeah so yeah that's so. cool i i agree with you i love this concept of of localization and communities and i agree with you i think it's it makes sense like you said that abdullah is big into nodes and some of these bigger players because i think it's really where long term players because let, let's just imagine Upland does grow big enough to have every city released. Like there is going to be hot spots of activity. We, you know, we can't predict what those will be, but I guarantee that a lot of these nodes will drive where a lot of players hang out in these communities. You know, you talked about Portage Park, which is probably one of the biggest just because it is so big, it's low mm -hmm. barriers to entry. There's a ton of properties in there. So I think they made a smart move getting so many people involved in that. Um, and they run it really well. I I, I got to admire like the way they've handled their governance and everything. They they have a mayor and all that. And, and, and it's, it's fun. It's, it's a, it's a whole new element where the, the players are, are kind of deciding their own path um, together, um, which something you, you don't always get to see that in video yeah. games so uh so it's it's really cool yeah, I, so. I do also need to give a shout out it's not necessarily a node because it's so small but um i also was was um uh, and pretty involved in trying to get together um the the property owners in greek town detroit i'm originally from detroit oh, cool. and um or the detroit outside detroit i should say but, um, you know, Greek town in Detroit, like that is the place to be. I mean, you can ask anyone from Southeast Michigan, like what's the best place in Detroit? They'll be like Greek town. So, so I went after Greek town when, when Detroit released and so did some other like Michiganders and stuff. So, um, we, um, we, we built up Greek town, Detroit, um, pretty quickly too. Like we hit 50%. There's only 41 props, but we hit 50% wow. like pretty quick. And, um, and so I'm opening a, a, a legit shop, an NFLPA shop down there. And we've got another, we've got a football shop. October has been buying up a lot of those props too. And he's, um, you know, he's been building a lot. And so 
so I'm, I'm i'm proud of our little of our little greek town we call ourselves the greek town geeks <laughs> and uh um it's a it's a fun it's a fun little mini note i guess you could say and and but when i'm, I'm really hoping that upland starts to um execute on the on the neighborhood ratings because like when they kind of put together the the outline of okay you know this is how the collection's going to be and stuff um some of the things they they try to like normalize it on a like per property basis so like living units per property that kind of thing and so like even a little place like in greek town where there's only 41 props but we've got you know a whole bunch of apartment buildings and that kind of thing on there and 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 the shops and, and that kind of thing so even a, a small um a small node when it's when it's built up properly it could you know it, it could uh, be more valuable that way too so um so we'll we'll see i am i am eagerly anticipating you know those those neighborhood spawned collections i think that will that will be really really cool so hope hopefully upland will do that soon yeah yeah that'll be really exciting to see how that develops how that adds to the economy especially if there's some type of you know upix bonus like collection for the neighborhoods that have been really built out to show even more value for uh for those ones the community is really getting behind so yeah that's that's really exciting as well yeah. um and, and i hope it, for those of you listening or watching that this really gives you another like if you if you're not yet involved in a node i don't want to say join mine or join jay mancy's like find one that you like find a community you like and some friends and get involved like there's we both have you know like most nodes have a have a, a discord you can join and join the community and start talking to people come up with ideas maybe you have a concept that will make your neighborhood really fun for people to get involved in and build around because that is really a proven way to add value like yeah, let's say some of some of the neighborhoods have lost, have been devalued in some ways, maybe sometimes like, for example, when they dropped L.A., that was such a shock to the economy just because I don't think we'll ever see anything shock the Upland economy that much. Obviously, there's been cryptos had a downturn, even though Upland has not had near of has been has not been affected nearly as much as the crypto market has, you know, right. Um but a lot of players speculate that oh, if crypto goes away, Upland's gonna go away. I I don't think so, you know. Um, so even if crypto goes down, Upland has still done fairly well. Um, yeah, and when LA was released, it was really expensive compared to the total value. Like if you take the mint the mint price of all the property that had been released in all of Upland, and then you take LA, it it probably represented like over 25% or so of the whole economy. Like it was so much new value added to the overall world released all at once that I honestly don't think there can be any single city released in the future that could affect the economy that much. And so I, yeah. if the fact that we're pushing through that just really goes to show that okay the upland the upland economy is here it's stable it's pretty steady i think people saw what happened in manhattan where like every property was 10x or 20x there for a time and they realized okay well that one was maybe over inflated you know and so there there was some balancing happening there and listening to idan and dirk talk about it i think they're actually pretty happy with where it's at and it doesn't always, I, I mean, just like the real, the real world real estate market, you, you don't expect to double or triple your money in a year. It's just not what happens. It's very rare cases where, where you can do that unless you you're really adding improvements to the house or something like that. And that's where getting involved in a node can do that. We're seeing nodes be able to, you know, tax the value of, of neighborhoods if they, if they really have a vision and build really exciting things for the community to get involved with because people are going to want to own a property in, in that node. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think really smart players, you know, like we were talking about earlier about like the cycles and, 
right now we've got we've got some people that are kind of late in their cycle and they're 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 looking to, to get out and then we've got other people that are that are coming in and it for someone new coming into the game now with with us dollars to spend they can do amazing you know buy oh, up yeah. these under mints and if you had like if you had a small group of people with with some money to spend they could target one of these like super cheap neighborhoods where people are just dumping dumping at 50 percent scoop up all these under mints and and get like a majority of the neighborhood and then build it up as a node they could like their yields if, if it ended up a spawn collection i mean first of all if you're buying at 50 percent, that basically makes your yield like 29 percent. yeah um and exactly. then you know you spawn a collection that, let's say it's got a 2x multiplier or something on it now you're at 58 percent yield um you know so so these kinds of things are are possible but you know you, you got to make it happen and 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 like you say too like for anyone um I, I would recommend you go into the in in the upland server in the uh, community projects tools channel keep your eye out there because there's there's a lot of nodes that are are putting their you know their advertisements or whatever they're trying to get people to join and um or yeah you you know reach out to to some people if you're already in the neighborhood or if you have an idea it's it 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 does add a lot more fun to the game when you're when you're starting to to build a community around you know around a shared vision so yeah and especially with spark and the fact that building up these nodes one of the key things that's necessary to have is a lot of spark to be able to build buildings like you said this ida node it, you know it, it has a design where these buildings make a shape and with a heart and stuff like that like it actually requires spark and that requires a community effort yeah, there are some people out there with a significant amount of spark, but it's still there's not one note out there that a single person could compete with, really. Like even if you had like 50 spark, I'm not sure who has the most. Maybe someone has close to that or maybe a little bit more. I I'm not sure the numbers. Or but even then you have <laughs> Yeah, you you have you have nodes out there that have hundreds and hundreds of spark going towards it because they've got enough people involved and all building towards it at once and this is really the key this is what makes it valuable is that it it requires people to work people coming together and working together and it's fun when you're like okay we've built this grand plan now we got to execute okay let's make sure we buy up all the neighborhoods let's make sure you know, a lot of the nodes are concerned. We want to make sure no dormant accounts own any properties. Let's make sure mm -hmm. we own every property. They're all active accounts. Let's get ownership of these really quick, you know, and that's, yeah. there's so well, many things that you can do right now to like add value to your node in the long run, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and what you said there, that was a key part of Monero's success is, I mean, we, we built this ahead of time and we didn't, we didn't even reveal the name of the target hood until an hour before the city launched. And so we're keeping on the wraps and then we said, okay, now go and go hard. We ended up um, uh, minting, I think it was 79% on that day. And then we accumulated, you know, more in the secondary. I think I we got up to like 90% in, within, within a couple days. And um, so we had, you know, we had a lot of buy-in and, um, and so the people, and then we, we kind of came up with our own methodology to transfer properties within, um, within our, our node or bringing other players in. And, and, and one thing that I'm really proud of too, I think this, this is a pretty awesome thing is I want to say it was a few days after launch, we actually had one point where we didn't have a single property for sale. Wow. 646 properties and zero were up for sale it was just blue you know no you guys no, thought you guys bought all the ones that were for sale yeah we had everything and then and then one person listed at 10 million so um we actually had a floor of 10 million at one point. <laughs> but i mean even now like we have mints that are they're like 6k mints that sell for like 250k because exactly. 
people want to be in the node, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the price. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, in, in real life, property, property prices vary a lot all, all over the place. I mean, like, um, just to, a real life example, like that, the, the house that I am, that I live in now is, is a pretty nice house, but it's like 20 minutes outside the city because when you go outside the city, it gets more affordable and, you know, you can get a bigger house. Now, some people want to be right downtown and exactly. you know, they'll get an apartment or something like right downtown and pay a lot of money because that's what they, that's what they want. You know, what I wanted was more room for my family and that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm more on the outskirts. And so we're going to see something similar to that develop with, with offline too, is like, it's, it's not necessarily about the earnings, but it's about, you know, where, where do you want to be? And, um, and who do you want to, who do you want to be hanging with? So exactly. Um, exactly. That's part of the, part of the evolution. And of course, when it comes to like the layer two stuff, like, you know, we'll be able to integrate these, these nodes and stuff into games. So like, um, if, if you have, if you have a game that, that utilizes the, um, the, the buildings, you know, like, um, I'll even, I'll give a nod to Opix world right now too, like and what they're doing with, with some of, some of their, um, layer two stuff is like, you know, if you can, if you can go and fly around in a jetpack and amongst all these buildings, a, a built up neighborhood is going to be way more interesting oh, yeah. than a blank canvas. So, I mean, you can have, you can have these blank properties that are yielding these crazy amounts, but it, you know, it's, it's not, it's not really building the long-term value. Yeah. And, and something I think that, that came up, um, and and I want to throw this throw this out into the into the world again, or maybe if there's someone from Upland watching and listening, it came up during like during that debate over the UIP one. Um, it, one of the best ideas that that I heard was someone was talking about um, using like like introducing like NPCs into Upland, where basically the NPCs become like renters for your properties. So like if you have an apartment building that has so many living units, then you can rent out so many spaces to NPCs. So, you know, maybe there's a way to shift the earnings from blank properties to your buildings are earning because yeah. your buildings are renting out to these NPCs. And, and then that way, like it also adds more value to spark because well, if you want to earn more OPEX, you got to build more buildings. You got to increase your living units or yeah. even on the secondary market, uh, living units will become more valuable. So, you know, someone, someone threw that out there, I think as a reply to one of my initial posts, but um, it, I was like, yeah, you know, that, that would be a great, a great way in for my mind's eye when you're explaining that i was thinking of the game have you ever played i forget the name of it but it's like a oh, oh yeah it's a, like roller coaster tycoon yes where you own like an amusement park mm -hmm. and the little npcs walk around and go on your rides and oh maybe there's a lot of garbage over here so you have to make sure you put a garbage can there it's like a, it's it's an amusement park management game right yeah and, yeah um Imagine Upland being somewhat, somewhat like that, where it's like there's people actually walking around that randomly, you know, like they're, they're AI little NPCs or whatever, moving around as to places that excite them the most. And then neighborhoods actually have to build, make themselves really exciting to like entice these little NPCs to want to move there and live there. And for the entertainment, the shopping they can do there, you know, mm -hmm. and you have like, neighborhoods competing in a way that's what is happening right now even though you can't see the little npcs running around it really is these these nodes are building up value to make themselves compelling to come to to get involved in it's like you know building disneyland before it actually exists like cr creating mm -hmm. this 
source of entertainment that people are going to want to go to, to see, to get involved in. Mm-hmm. And there's been all sorts of creative things that people have done. I mean, mm-hmm. I should probably do an episode just where I showcase because there's probably a lot of people out there who have no idea some of these builds that have happened and what, what people are are doing and showcase some of these. So there's a, there's a video idea that I'll, that I'll have to do for sure. There you go. And, and yeah, you know, those kind of games, like, I mean, going back to the original Sim city, um, you know, Sim city and, and those different like simulation and tycoon games and that kind of thing. Like those kind of games were, were always like my favorites growing up. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, how can I, you know, how can I increase my happiness or whatever, and that kind of thing, or like the crime rate or the whatever, the pollution and blah, blah, yeah. like, you know, and, and, and figuring out the the strategy of, again, how how do you attract people your, to make your population go up, which makes your tax revenue go up, and how do you balance the taxes and you know, all, the, all that kind of strategy is I'm, I'm not the best with the hand-eye coordination stuff. So like, street fighter and mortal Kombat and stuff I, I was i was lost my my friends would kick my ass all the time but <laughs> like the strategy games <laughs> i could I, I could do really well in those so yeah 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 and i definitely think upland has been very like from a gamer's background i think those strategy type gamers have been the most appealed to upland because it is i mean in theory it's this big game perpetual game where you make money for coming up with some of the best strategies and it really is an entrepreneurial continuous event that all of us are participating in that's never ending it's it's really cool and there's really not anything else much like it that's actually happening and and i wish people caught on to that concept too just and you mentioned earlier yeah upland doesn't have the best graphics right now or or you know, it's it's been mainly just this 2D experience, but like really look at the groundwork of what they're doing because it's it's going to be ever evolving and ever changing. But if you really look at the groundwork, we have a map of the actual world which everyone can tie value and experiences to. And I just think of the impl- implications of businesses getting involved and wanting to market themselves like if I was McDonald's right now, I'd be like, okay, how do we acquire every McDonald's location in Upland and just put, you know, golden arches on it just to show people, hey, this is where a McDonald's location is and to remind them that we exist. It's like a fun way. I mean, that's something that a business could do right now in Upland to market themselves. Yeah. yeah. It's just buy properties in every city and put these virtual billboards that they make in these outdoor decor shops you know mm-hmm. and, and any brand could do that right now and just the fact that already exists like if you're an entrepreneur out there go and find businesses in your area that you could sell this to and i there's so many ways to to make money here not just playing the game itself but getting brands involved and businesses involved that's where a lot of money starts to come in to this place because if you do happen to own one of the locations of a mcdonald's maybe they're gonna pay whatever it takes to to buy up all those locations in the future right yeah there was there was a player who minted a property i think it was like a i want to say it was like a 24k mint or something like that right um it, it wasn't it wasn't all that huge but their strategy they they were they're were putting all their prices like at obscene amounts and someone ended up coming along and buying it for twenty five hundred dollars and so my suspicion is that it's it's the owner of that it, it was a business i think it was like a laundromat or something like that yeah but like it wasn't a big collection prop or anything like that but it had meaning to some i again i'm, I'm assuming it had meaning to someone in in real life like they yep. wanted to own their property right and and so to a business that's generating you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue like you know 2500 bucks isn't you know yeah, it's a small it's a small expense and it's a write-off it. pretty much you know for right. a lot of businesses so their spot and yeah because yeah. it's a it's a marketing expense for them and businesses can write off a lot of a lot of marketing expenses that way so yeah so i mean that that's that's a strategy too 
Yep. But, you know, one of the things you had mentioned, I want to kind of touch back on it as, um, you know, you're talking about crypto and how like Upland will, will succeed even if crypto, you know, has a, a long dark winter Yeah, is, is that, you know, I think one of the, one of the attractive things about Upland and certainly something that attracted me to it is the, the ease of use in that, um, you don't have to know anything about crypto or be involved in crypto at all to, to play Upland. But what they've, what they've done is they have, um, made like NFTs accessible to people that don't care about, you know, the blockchain or whatever. They just yeah, they crypto to, wallets they, and any, anything like right. that. Well, so, you know, I think it's this, this platform that they've built where they've been intentionally, um, um, uh, targeting people that like are not, um, crypto savvy, if you will. I think that is a major strategic advantage for them. Exactly. Um, they flipped it on its head in, in a lot of ways and, 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 made and it so you not don't having, have to be technical to, to get into it. Right. And, and I think not having Upix being a tradable token was also, uh, an, an awesome move because i mean we've seen what has happened to some of these other you know, like i mentioned decentraland their mana token is down like hammer 96 from its from its all-time high like we, that would have been terrible for for upland so yeah and, and honestly it makes it not even really play to earn like if upland if upix were tradable and fluctuating like that it would really just it would suck right now because yeah. Think about it. Like you, if I list a property for sale and it, and okay, Bitcoin drops, which means every other crypto drops when Bitcoin drops pretty much, right? Like then mm -hmm. up, then Upix would drop. And then a property I had listed for sale for, you know, 500,000 Upix, or let's just say I listed it for $500 worth, like is now devalued to like $200 or something overnight. Like how could you, ever sleep at night like if your properties are going to just go up and down in value like the fact that it's stable and steady is the only way that it works as this game that you can kind of log in every once in a while if you don't want to like be heavily involved in it you can kind of come in every once in a while you know start a new build if you have a little bit of spark you know list a few properties for sale and then you can just rest easy for a month knowing your account's doing its thing right yeah, yeah it's it, it's stable and, and I like that it's kind of, you know, it's still all ties back to the US dollar, which is a, a stable currency. The cryptocurrencies are just, they're too, they're too volatile to be, um, you know, to, to, to actually use them as currencies, you know, yeah. for, for the reason you, you say it's just, yeah. It, yeah. And it honestly, it, it would remove that, f like, cause we're talking about being strategy gamers, right? And like it, it removes and it removes a, the ability for part of that strategy to exist in a game of making strategic moves of the buying and selling and flipping when really, if it, if it were this coin that's going up and down, you might as well have just bought the token. Yeah. And then hoped it goes up because no matter what, all your properties are going to follow the fluctuation of that token anyway. So, yeah, yeah, there would be you would be increasing a little bit more, but you're still just going to be stuck on how how successful that token is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So yeah, I agree with you completely. I'm I'm super happy that they didn't do that because I. I would have lost a lot of money if it was <laughs> if it was tied to like Bitcoin or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, uh, I've really enjoyed our discussion. We've gone on for for it looks like an hour and ten minutes about so far, and uh, I've really enjoyed uh, talking, learning more about your story and uh, some of the projects you're involved in, Upland Gaming, International Developer Association. That's development association is that what it is yeah that's mm -hmm. really cool i'm excited to see what ida does next and upland gaming especially with the block explorers um mm -hmm. thanks so much for coming on my friend anything else you'd like to uh share with the community 
Um, well, I just want to say, Upland Gaming, we've got we've got a lot more in store. We've got a lot in the the plans. You know, after um, after we do the the BE battles, the the next thing I'm I'm just gonna throw out a hint is that it'll it'll involve the location on the map. So where you wow. are, it, where you are is going to be important. Um, so, uh, there's just a, a little teaser there, but, but eventually like, again, our, our goal is we want, we want p players to be able to utilize all of their assets in, in ways that are fun or, you know, if they don't care about whatever it may be, then someone else may, and it'll give them value that they can exchange what's not important to them to someone to for something that is important to them right so yeah um, i'm excited to see what someone can do with the all these like fifa mascots and posters that they're doing right like there's mm -hmm. so many interesting concepts that could come out of the legits that are being created and it's like well that's hard to see those being used in certain game types but hey i'm sure uh you and your team or some other team could come up with something cool there mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> The gears are always turning. <laughs> so. Oh, I bet. I bet. Well, yeah, thanks for spending some time with me and for sharing so much cool information with the community. I was really inspired by your story about getting involved with the community, getting involved on Discord, just making relationships. I can tell you've had so much success in this game and, and in the community just by being involved, talking to people and building relationships. So it's been really inspiring to, to hear your story. And, and I hope that that inspires other people out there to do the same. Well, good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And, and yeah, you know, that's one of the things about Upland that I love is it is, it's one of those, when you raise the tide, it floats all boats, right? So we, we, we're all, we're all in this together. And as we all help each other out, it um we we all benefit together and that's that's one of the, the beautiful things about upland is it's it's not a i win you lose or vice versa game you know we can we can all win together and um so that that's what i'm all about that's that's part of the reason i i love upland um even with all of its frustrations <laughs> um you know i still love it and i'm committed to it and um you know yeah uh if uh if anyone has any uh you know, any other questions or anything, you can hit me up on Discord. And, you know, again, thanks for having me on the podcast. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it thank you. Yeah, fun. what a great way to wait, great way to close it out. You know, we, we can all win together. So let's come together as a community and, uh, and uh, build some fun stuff.